But let me tell you something, uh, Dr. King. There's something you have to learn. Please don't look down on anybody. Don't even look down on yourself. Don't look down on anybody in your life, no matter who what you are, no matter who you are. Never you ever, because God could use the next person to uplift you. When I was working in Ochodi, I had these garage boys. They were my friends. And one happened to belong to a family that had this largest bands of land in Alagbado. And he took me there to show me their property. I helped them to bring some buyers. A week later, after I got the employment, they sent for me, the entire family. They had about 400 plus of land. They said they were giving it to me to sell on behalf of the... 400 plots of yes, land. Yes, in Alagbado. Apart from Nureni Yusuf, the former air vice marshal, may so rest in peace. I don't think there was anybody who owned anything apart from families bigger than me by 1991 over there. So they gave me to me to sell. That's where you have AIT now and some other. They gave them to me to sell for 5,000 naira in 1990. 400 plots of land. Yes, each one 5,000 5, naira. And what will be my own? I asked them. They said, anything you put on top is yours. We're not going to pay you commission. So I started settling. I saw the first six plots. The first thing I did was to go to National Concord, the Chief MKO Abiola's uh, National Concord, one of the biggest newspapers in those days. I went there, I put my money there, run adverts. And it was selling like hot cake. So if I'd sold... 10 plots, I'll be making 50,000. In those days, 20,000 can buy you a brand new car. So I was making millions. And somebody advised me, Alan, start buying those properties yourself too. You have enough money. So I now floated Alan Noema and company, the real estate company. So I bought about 87 of those plots myself. At the time, I increased my price to 20,000, 30,000. So money was everywhere. Of course, I, mis I had my own share of a stupidity as a young person. I was living in airport hotel for two years. Yes. <laughs> I had my... You, I and I, I was I, wrong. I like that confession. Yeah. That my own share of... My own share. Oh Lord. Don't, do, don't you ever emulate that. Because... Uh, youthful exuberance, but I was working very hard. What happened was that I didn't have time to start looking for... Houses in those days, Keja was the in thing, and I never liked houses with three bedroom flat, one toilet. So, to get anything that is on suite in those days was difficult. So, I said, Okay, let me go to the hotel, and I left where I was squatting. So, I went there. That was how I ended up staying there for two years without knowing it. So, even when I married in 1993, my wife, when she came in 1992, uh, she visited me and she thought I had a house. And when we went to the hotel, she thought I, wanted, I left something there I wanted to pick. And I said, this is where I stay. The girl started crying. <laughs> she started crying. So, but she, she later got to know that it was just one of those things. What I'm trying to say is this. I challenged myself. I got this boy that I, I didn't look down on him. He became my... Uh, 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 a life-changing uh, uh, person, an angel of God. Don't look down on the person beside you. Yes. Don't look down. You could be responsible for your upliftment in life. So that was how I started the real estate business. I started buying Lekki. I was one of the biggest estate owners in Lekki in those days, up to 1998, where you had uh, my, this Mayegu area of uh, before Chevron. I don't think anybody owns anything bigger than me there. So, a lot of people thought I just arrived with a piece. No. But in 1992, I had to resign because I didn't want conflict of interest in my place of work. So, I floated Onyem and Company, a law firm, then Allen Onyem and Company, the real estate, then International Business, uh, business Links, Continental Business Links Limited. You have to study your environment, find out what they lack. Like. When you're the first person to provide an answer, you become a millionaire. You get this. Go to your communities. Go to your environment within your nation. 
Look at those problems that I've not found. You, nobody has found that answer yet. See if you could tackle that problem. Problem. It could be in your community. It could be in your local government. It could be anywhere. It could even be the vicinity you live in. If you're the first person to discover a solution to that, you, you're on your way to wealth. Look for a problem and solve and make money from it. Say, I yes. you. So, um, I floated Continental Business Link Limited. In those days, some of these importers didn't have links uh, to manufacturers abroad, especially South Korea. So I got Korean businessmen. I did a trade exhibition at the Ferrer Palace, brought all these uh, traders who were who would want to go into importation, they were paying me, going through me to import. And I was charging my commission, making legitimate money, bringing, bringing the Korean factories here. And they were exhibiting, the Koreans were paying me, Nigerians were paying me, millions rolled in. I'm talking about, I made my first millions at the age of 25. That was why I married very early too. I married at the age of 26. You married at 26? Yeah. My parents made sure I married at 26. I was making too much money and many, you know, understand. I understand. <laughs> but I was a good boy. I was a good boy. So, um, from there, I went into import and trade business. That's every tide limited. I was importing electronics, wholesale electronics into the country. I was discharging at the Hebrew jetty in uh, Apapa, we are selling in containers and all that. So I've always been there, but one thing I've noticed with me is the penchant for peace. While I was doing all this, anywhere I saw crisis, I used to put my head inside. Why did I name it a peace in the first place? I've told you, most of my businesses is peace this. I'm the owner of all time peace media communication. I'm the owner of the International Center for Nonviolence and Peace Development. Uh, most of my businesses are peace this, peace that. So when I wanted to flow the airline, I started asking myself, what the peace divine? Divine <laughs> peace. So we think out with so many things. And I told my wife, a peace. Everybody, my children, they said, oh, that sounds nice, a peace. So we went to the corporate affairs uh, uh, commission. We applied through our lawyers, and uh, they said the name was available. So that was how we bettered a piece. But why did I choose to float an airline? That is another breaking of rules. Trading where even uh, the, the brave ones fear to trade on. So I've always put out myself to provide solutions where solutions are actually needed. That's what I'm trying to say. In 2007, I was thinking of how do I actually impact lives because I prayed to God in 2003 when most of my businesses were going down. Help me, God. Give me the means and I'll give it back to you through helping the lives of the indigent. So one of the things we did was giving people money, do this, do this business, do that business, and they will come back some, come back some months later to tell you, oh, that money. They tell you stories. So my dad said, why not look for some kind of thing? My businesses were making billions, but they were not creating the kind of, the number of jobs I would like them to create. There are some businesses you sit down in your house and be making billions, but you're not impacting several people. It was then somebody said, why not go into aviation? That one jet could give a thousand people jobs. That was how I became passionate. I didn't go into the airline because it could give me billions. I went in there because I believed it could give jobs. Then I started studying. I trained myself. I trained myself on it. So in 2013, I bought my first plane. I bought the first three planes. They happened to be Donia jets. I took a bola on the owner of uh, Air First Aviation. He was running charter uh, operations. He was my consultant. So when we bought the first three planes, we had bought one in France, bought the second one in Germany, we went to the US, bought so three planes, three Donia 328 jets. We got back to London. 
above champagne. I don't drink alcohol. I said, but let's celebrate. Let's pop. So these three jets now can give jobs to 3,000 people. Bolaho said, no. No. I said, but what, that's what I told you. He said, no. That these three jets, they were executive jets. That's for Tata. He said, you only need three beautiful girls to market them. You know, Tata was booming. The Tata business was booming. You don't need any staff. What you need is three beautiful girls for marketing. Get two, two sets of pilots for the plane. That's all. You could be making $200,000 every day of each of those planes. He thought, oh, just, I was angry. He's alive. Uh, we fell out that same day. He said, he calls me chief. Said, chief, why? Why are you angry? I said, but this is not what I told you. I said, I want to employ people, not to enrich myself the more. He is alive. His name is Bolaho Apaton. So he said, in that case, what you want to do is to buy Boeing. You want to go into full-blown airline. I thought it was charter. I said, yes, if that one could provide job. We were supposed to come back to Nigeria the following day. We had to go back to America. We went back to Texas to go and meet Jetran, Douglas Jaffe. We said, we've come back again. What is the problem this time? We want to buy Boeing. He said, why do you want to buy Boeing? I said, I want something that could give jobs to my people. I want, he, he, he now looked at me. The white man looked at me and said, don't you think it's a dangerous field for you to venture? Airlines don't last in your country. And there's no gain in airline business. I said, I know, but it could give jobs to people. The man stood up and hugged me. He said, this is the first time a Nigerian will be coming here. The man is a billionaire in dollars. They sell plans in 200s. So he came to me and said, this is the first time a Nigerian will be coming here. I'm talking about his people. I'm going to help you. So, if I tell you the amount I paid for my first four Boeing 737, is only God Almighty. You can explain it. Peanuts. That was how I started with seven planes. And that, it happens that that is the first time any Nigerian line will be starting with more than two planes. I started with seven. And you packed it for almost one year. So and they didn't give me um, license. Shebi, they say my airline belongs to Mama Peace. Mama Peace was in power, yet I didn't get license for almost two years. Is that possible? It's not possible. Alan, I have to beg you now <laughs> because if we sit here. Yeah, you know, we won't go today. But one of the things I want to tell everybody here, Alan Oyema is a proud liar. Alan Oyema is a living hero. Tenkeshon. While I was growing up, I was told about heroes. Heroes are people that have died. People that you hear in books. But today we have a living hero. And we recognize you today. We celebrate you today. We acknowledge you today. Is there any disruptor in the house? I'm going to say thank you for what you do. Why I'm, I'm taking you, you know, this memory lane is in your march to success, you're going to meet a lot of stumbling blocks. There are people who will be out there. They may not even know you. Just because you're about to do something, they want to stand in your way. Don't you ever give up. You need perseverance. You need to be focused. You need to have ideas too. You need to process your ideas yourself. That is the only thing you've got. And you need your God also to protect whatever you are trying to do. Air Peace today is the largest airline not only in Nigeria but in the whole of West and Central Africa. And in May, we shall be receiving our first batch of 13 brand new planes. Nobody can stop us as long as God is on the throne because God will remain on the throne. But one thing I leave with you today is this. One, 
think of how you can touch lives of that other people other than, you, other than yourself. You might think you're nobody. If you have 1,000 naira, there's somebody who doesn't have even a penny. Out of your 1,000, try and see how you could benefit that other person who doesn't have any. You don't need to be a millionaire to start, to start thinking about selflessness. You need to be selfless in your thoughts. Because even the Bible says, love thy neighbor. You need to be selfless in your thoughts. You must try at all times to also be, to be patriotic to your nation. You must seek those things that add values to the community, to the society you live in. Put yourself last in your considerations and the rest will be history. God bless you all. Thank you. Come on, put your hands for Alan Oyema. Um, people were expecting that I should say that, uh, well, that's the code. Uh, you work for yourself.